Um, yes, as Peter mentioned, um, Kevin Wilson from Microsoft over here. Um, firstly, I want to just thank you guys uh, for putting this together. We love having the opportunity to actually share um, with the broader community. Um, and especially, you know, what we do here at Microsoft, um, I think uh, Florian gave you a good idea from a sort of an external Microsoft uh, facing perspective. So, you know, how we're impacting customers. I work for um, internally within the cloud supply chain organization. So we're responsible for basically procuring all the components that go in these servers that you see here in the data server, that uh, data centers that run the Azure cloud. Um, and then and we track that process all the way through to the actual uh, manufacturer of those servers that included in, that get included in these racks and then ultimately installed in, in the data centers. So let me let me show you uh, what's going on over uh, over here um, at Microsoft. First, we'll cover a, a couple of things. We'll we'll tell you why we actually went down this path, um, and then ultimately how we actually came about the solution. And I'll just right off the bat say, you know, it took us less than a year to uh, find SAPO, engage SAPO, and actually implement it into production into the environment, which is kind of an unheard of scenario within the Microsoft world. Uh, we we move. Uh, carefully um, in in the back organization to ensure you know the integrity of our solutions that we're delivering right so um, just goes to show around the the simplicity um, of the solution that sits in the back end um, we'll show you the high level architecture uh, won't be able to show a demo today it is our internal system so um, we'll just run through the components that we're actually using and and, and demonstrate the the solution benefits and funny enough, uh, Simeon, you know, um, mentioned it, it's Siemens, their procurement process. That's the same solution that we chose to get out of the bat with. So it seems like it's an industry-wide uh, problem of tracking your, your purchase orders through uh, through payment. And then we'll just talk, you know, high level as to what our way forward is. And uh, we, we hope that um, other folks can actually resonate with the same journey that we're going on. Um, so let's just take a look at uh, generically our, our problem uh, statement. And uh, I'm going to tie it back to the purchase to pay process because that was the initial one, initial process that we chose to to implement. And, but it's, it, it's, it's basically any process that sits in the back end if you're using your traditional me mechanisms to interface with, uh, with SAP. Um, we simply don't have, uh, or we did not have real-time access into those SAP events. And in today's world, if you have that as as your position, um, it, you're going backwards very, very fast. So we needed that real time um, access to the status change of our business objects that are occurring in SAP. Um, and much like Siemens, we have a very large SAP uh, footprint in the back end. Uh, we obviously have a lot of other systems too, including like D365 to manage certain components uh, within the supply chain, but a lot a lot of our um, supply chain is run on SAP. Um, from a monitoring perspective, since we don't have that real-time access to those events, we don't have any real-time monitoring of, of issues that are happening in the supply chain as and when they occur. So if you hear about attention to and response, or I like to call it insight to action, insight being um, when do we actually get uh, uh, insight into an issue that's occurring in our extended supply chain? You know, so way upstream, what's happened? I need to know, uh, I need to have that insight around that exception as and when it occurs. And then um, the ability to quickly trigger corrective action uh, in order to make it happen. So if you don't have that uh, immediate insight into it, then uh, the corrective action can change. Right. If you don't pick it up in time, there's nothing you can do. So you accept the consequence and ultimately, ultimately your customer uh, suffers. Um, we, we suffer from this a lot. So the long lead time to deploy um, our current solution um, involved coding for every uh, event uh, against every business object. And so we had a big amount of code and any time we have to any time we have to change code, we have to go through, you know, a lot of hoops to make that happen. Um, so there's a long lead time. So a lot, often, you know, the business um, chooses not to go down that path or they go down an alternative path and they don't um, uh, they, they don't adopt basically best practice to get uh, the data into their hands. They'll start to ping databases directly and, and misbehave. All right. 
the from a, a resourcing perspective and purely because of the the mode that we were using the different systems were actually polling sap you know to say you know is there a purchase order change is there a purchase order change you know is there a purchase order change um, and we would do that several times over in parallel just because different systems were wanting the same uh, answer uh, to that you know just different downstream systems so um that is obviously not very good from an SAP perspective. We had external systems basically impacting performance on, on SAP because they were just looking and hoping that there was a change. And if there was a change, they would do the read and then you know off it goes. That's that's just not a good um, uh, use case, you know, or a good experience for anybody. So a couple of examples, and we'll run through this in a little bit. Um, we want those timely notifications in our downstream systems to suppliers. Um, informing them of any changes, you know, in POs. Um, we also dealt with accruals, um, you know, so that the whole invo invoicing side of things. So we went all the way for procure to pay um, and we want early warnings from an ASN and the goods receipt perspective. So um, this is obviously key for us, the shipping of, of products um, from our, our tier two suppliers all the way through ultimate ultimately to our system integrators who are building the service for us. If there's any delays in shipments uh, or receipts, any receipt discrepancies, we need to react uh, accordingly and in time. So what did we come up with? Um, the, the combination of like SAP that's running our, that cloud supply chain um, together with that SAPIO add-on uh, and the event grid, right? Initially when we engaged with the SAPIO, you know, literally just last year, um, there wasn't that direct connectivity with the event grid. It, it was going through SAP event mesh or enterprise messaging it, as it was known at that time. Um, and, and from a Microsoft perspective, at that time, we, you know, we're building an, uh, a world around the uh, event grid for our internal solutioning so we can have one place where all of our systems can tap in and subscribe to those events. So it made sense for us to have that direct connectivity between SAP and event grid. Um, you know, in addition, maybe down the road, you know, we'll also connect SAP to SAP event mesh. Uh, certain applications, I would imagine, are, are just going to raise their events directly in event mesh. Um, Cloud-based applications, maybe Ariba, IBP, or something like that, will go there, and then we'll simply use the uh, connectivity that's already out there. Um, that between SAP event mesh and, as, and in event grid, but so we'll continue to have event grids kind of being the, the center to our universe or our downstream systems, right? So we wanted to, to, you know, move away from a kind of a polling infrastructure to a more modern, flexible, agile, efficient uh, one. And, you know, uh, Simeon spoke to the same points uh, at, at, uh, at Siemens. Um, and I can't, I can't say anything more than that. It, it's literally that's that's what we're we're trying to do. We're just moving, you know, forward towards uh, an environment that we can actually work with, where there isn't an impact on SAP from external systems. It's uh, basically a fire and a forget, and let the downstream systems understand how they want to actually consume and use the data. Um, and and SAP is not part of that process. And 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 maybe that's that's like kind of a philosophy that we follow and and uh, you know. Most folks should should think that the sending system of an event or the the ra raising system should not really uh, take part in um, how the downstream systems are using you know the the data. In other words, the more point to point you know uh, uh, connectivity. Um, let's publish the information and let the downstream systems decide how and when they want to pick up that information and actually use that. Um, Florian mentioned, you know, as part of the the cloud event standard, uh, in, you know, he's actually involved in the in the formation of that standard. We, from within a, a cloud supply chain perspective, actually leveraged that standard. We brought together a couple of in other internal organizations within Microsoft who are also producing events and consuming those events within Event Grid. Um, we we set a, a global standard for Microsoft. Um, which is just uh, the same format as within the cloud event standard that uh, that um, Florian spoke to. You know, so there's the the cloud event standard that we we actually use, and I give an example on on a later uh, screen. Um, and then as with Microsoft, we believe in our products. So and as your first approach, you know, so let's bring the data to uh, event grid. 
and you kind of saw exactly how easy it was to actually consume within um, teams. Um, we've got Holger Bruchalt on the on the call over here. I think he was the one who actually uh, built and developed that for um, a Sapio, you know, using that Sapio add-on. Uh, at the end of it, um, on the last slide over here, I get over, give a link to that on YouTube. So, you know, go and have a look at it. It just literally took like an hour to actually configure. So, um, I don't know if it was, uh, uh, you know, clear enough earlier, but let's just explain to you the two types of events here that um, we deal with here at Microsoft uh, using the SAPIO add-on. The first one, um, and both of these I'm going to use just the business object, um, uh, you know, so Biz 2020, 2012 for the PO Creates, it's the same example that, that was showed earlier. Um, the first type of event is what we're just terming a notification event. All right. So it's a small little payload. You can see the payload there on the right hand side. That's literally the size of, a, of our payload. Um, we have a, a couple of custom properties that are in there that maybe helps uh, the downstream systems connect to or subscribe to um, purchase orders that are of interest to them. So for example, a purchase order type, you may want to um, only subscribe to capital POs or expense POs and, and take it from there. Um, so with a, a pure notification event, it's a very small, you, you literally saw the configuration, that's it. Right? There's no payload, um, you, you, you publish it out to the event grid. We've got a subscribing application that basically would read that data and then they get to choose. Right? Do I need to go get further information? Um, in our solution, um, there's some events that we don't need to go get information. So for example, if you get a, a PO deletion event and you subscribe to that, um, unless you need the, the reason for rejection, um, you know, there's no reason to actually go back to the database and read that uh, using a BAPI call. You literally can create, um, your, your, your subscribing system can subscribe to that and actually just go in and deal with it however it wants to do, whether it's, you know, notification to, to the uh, supplier that you're deleting or whether you just want to show an analytics account of, you know, orders deleted, or, or so forth, but whatever, whatever the purpose of that subscribing application, they can choose whether to go back and get the data or not. And then if they get the data, they have the option to actually store and persist that data, you know, again, in the Azure land. Um, the second type of uh, event that we use is the data event. You know, so there's certain events that we know uh, we just, we need the data to be persisted, you know, downstream, and we're going to be uh, using the data in its entirety um, for our downstream processes. So in that instance, when we get, uh, so for example, a PO create, um, the settings there within the SAPIA, let's go get, get all the data that we need in order to send it. So we'll go get the data. Um, we, we populate that actually in the cloud, same cloud event standard, but now the, the payloads, you know, a, a lot heavier. Um, we go there and then within this, uh, you know, within the Azure event grid framework, because um, it's not just event grid, we have a couple of other components uh, sitting around it. We store the data. Um, and then when the subscribing application then reads that event, for example, no need to go back to SAP. We have the data persisted, you know, in Azure. So we can just go fetch the data from, from uh, Azure and, and not SAP. So both of these um, patterns, you can kind of see how SAP is less impacted. You know, there isn't uh, the continuous polling um, there's only one read of the data, um, uh, you know, especially in the in the in the uh, data event pattern. Okay, so what do we go live with? Uh, from a, a my order perspective, we're talking about a purchase order visibility, very similar to to Siemens. Um, we basically wanted to get any exception exceptions around that. Um, and just before I continue, maybe I just want to uh, mention. Um, you know, SAP has their tool, SAP Event Management, something also I've been working with for many years. Uh, also, you know, uses events, um, you know, to rate, to find and uncover exceptions uh, within your pro process and specifically within Procure to Pay, for example, when things are not going well, it can raise those events. Um, we are not using that particular solution here right now, but uh, when we do, we will be using the same technique. We'll just raise a business object event when we uncover the fact that, for example, a purchase order acknowledgement has not been posted. Right? That's something you can't do in native ECC, but you can do it with uh, ECC and, and event management on top of that. 
you can determine when things are not happening when they should be happening. Um, but I would use the same technique just to raise a business object that would then trigger the event to up to uh, the event grid. And from there, I would be able to react to a supplier to say, listen, your service level agreement for sending a purchase order acknowledgement back to us has expired. You need to send us a, a confirmation, right? Or if an ASN was supposed to ship at a certain time and it hasn't, um, event management would pick up that, uh, you know, fact trigger uh, a Sapio uh, business object and it would send it to the event grid so we can react to that. So back to the, the scenario, we're talking about about 60,000 purchase order changes per year. Uh, these are all internal notifications that we want to um, tap into. Um, and it's again, just our pilot project, but it, there was significant churn in, the, in, in our organization around getting real-time access into this. And uh, it, was, it was pretty simple just to actually um, set up. Um, always like to look at what success looks like. So obviously we're looking at the, uh, the, um, the reduction in the number of tickets. So almost exclusively folks calling to, to figure out what's the process of, of an order, right? Where is my order? You know, what's the status of my order? Um, we want any of those downstream systems to be immediately um, update, uh, updated with the latest information and available through, through um, users. Um, you can kind of see our, 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 our current experience of 20 hours, 21 hours to actually get the data through, through all of its downstream systems. We, we're getting it down to seconds now. And then reducing that polling, we had literally about 70,000 hits to the SAP database per hour, um, just with the systems looking for the status changes of purchase orders. So what does it look like from a from a, a large scale perspective? We have the publisher. So from within SAP ECC, um, we have that SAPIO add-on, and I know it's available for S4, but uh, we leveraging SAC, uh, SAP ECC for our POs. So um, implemented that SAPIO um, add-on, and then we've got our basically our our let's just call it a little platform uh, that ingests those events and and then pushes it out to the, the subscribers of it, right? So it's not just event grid, but that's our initial endpoint. And then basically in there, we're um, uh, enriching the data and then routing it to the, the receivers, right? That's our platform that we're dealing with. Um, and within that environment, that's where we're looking for a high throughput. Um, it is based on the cloud event schema. We're talking about, um, the push-pull uh, model, as well as we've built the telemetry um, and then archiving, reprocessing, all of the functionality that you need for uh, consuming those messages and sending them forward. So from a high-level architecture, you can kind of see over here, there's a, there's a Sapio um, integration. Um, most of them notification events out to Azure Event Grid. We basically um, also, as a, as a side, thanks why we don't have to use uh, data events for all of them. We push the data out uh, to other data marts. Um, when it gets to the zero event grid, we've got our external events, um, or oh, not, not, I'll we'll get to external events now. Um, the subscribing applications will be able to consume those SAP events, and if they want to uh, pull additional data, they can also pull it out from the data hub or, or, or BW. Um, so not necessarily going back and hitting that ELP. You can understand there's a little bit of latency between that. If you need real time uh, real time uh, access to that data, then you can also from uh, you know from the Azure Event Grid. Once you you publish, you can um, you can call that uh, the BAP directly back to SAP. Um, in our supply chain world, don't necessarily have to have that second minute type response. So we're happy to actually get the data from uh, data, data Hub uh, as and when it arrives. Um, you can see some of those downstream systems, some of our future thinking piece. Um, basically, once it's in a, a Azure event grid, any, any system can actually consume those SAP related events, as well as any of those systems can publish uh, their own events back onto the Azure event grid. And we intend to uh, consume those events within uh, SAP ECC um, in the in incoming stages of the project. Okay, so if I focus on just the the My Orders app that we dealt with, um, just I got five minutes left, Peter. <laughs> um, <All right>. Solution. <laughs> so just just 
uh, just high level, like from a, a benefits perspective, and these are real benefits that we achieved in a, in a very short amount of time. Um, the ability to maximize the usage of data, not only maximize the usage of data, but we also maximized uh, the amount of data that we could do. And when I say the amount of event uh, data, it's just the events themselves. The events themselves were not getting to the right place at the right time. So with, with more data available in less time, uh, we were able to maximize the usage of that data. It right? becomes much more important. That insight to action um, literally became a, a measure that we uh, were now proud of. Um, and efficiency, the event through point, uh, throughput greatly increased the, the throughput by actually adopting this architecture. Uh, we reduced our Azure resource usage again by, by eliminating that whole polling mechanism. Um, the vastly reduced the, the, the usage of our resources. And I'm talking about like compute and storage and so forth. Um, and we increased our real time uh, data or access to that data. Um, the solution itself very flexible. I saw a, a question in, in the chat a little earlier about whether this can be done for any object. Absolutely, even a custom object, um, multiple use cases. It's it's. It's exciting. It's opened up a world of thought for us. Um, it's just like what's next, you know, uh, and, and you can implement uh, things pretty quickly. So from an agile perspective, time to enable, time to insight, time to action, um, all of those were reduced greatly. Right? Time to enable is more of an IT type fo focus. So to build something and stand it up in production is uh, is a matter of weeks as opposed to even in the Microsoft world uh, as opposed to months uh, when you need some downtime to, to load some code into SAP uh, you don't need that anymore um, and from a scale perspective very scalable solution um, uh, that that's that's offered over here I just want to I think this is maybe the last slide uh, our path for forward just just from a high level perspective what we were doing you know with the SAP here there's initial discovery you know how can we do this does this fit our security and our our, our thinking going forward once we'd move past that let's move uh, with a, a pilot which is this my orders application let's stand up some monitoring and put the dev ops procedure you know in place um, so all of that's there uh, now what we want to do is, if you think about it, we just we need to expand expand the footprint of the actual events that are uh, in the Azure Event Grid, so that our downstream systems can actually do that. So we'll be pulling more data out of SAP. Um, we also have blockchain running some of our supply chain processes, so we'll also be publishing blockchain you know events out to SAP. In fact, we're also working with a Sapio to build that blockchain adapter uh, for us and our partners on the blockchain. Um, so that's that's in the work and pretty exciting. Um, but then, and then going forward, it's we once we have that you know a, a good amount of data that's covering our supply chain processes, we'll look at expanding those downstream applications. So leveraging the logic apps you saw the example you know earlier, um, API apps, web apps, all of the the functionality, and then expanding into machine learning and artificial intelligence. We've got a lot of this stuff already in place, but we need to tie it in with all the new sets of data that will actually be. Uh, pulling in from phase uh, three. So I think, uh, Peter, I've got one minute left. These are the, a couple of other little uh, interesting pieces. Feel free to subscribe. Um, Holger is a great uh, Azure, uh, SAP on Azure video podcast. You can see it down there on the bottom left. Um, at the top left, that is the, the video um, of the demo a little bit earlier. Um, and then there's another one, uh, another SAP blog. So welcome to um, go and check out some further uh, information on this the solution.